Brian and Bobby Houston are the pastors of Hillsong Church in Sydney, Australia. They are known for their massive conferences and lively music, with more than 50 million people singing their songs every week. Their 40-year journey hasn't been without challenges. But today, Bobby has blossomed in her role as the founder of Color Conferences for Women. In her book, Stay the Path, Bobby shares some of the milestones that have shaped her life and helps us navigate the bends and curves we'll face in our own lives. Well, Bobby Houston, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have a slight bias because I grew up in Australia, so I'm from Down Under. <laughs> so um, it's just a joy to see what Hillsong has done, not just in Australia, but all over the world. And I want to ask, because I know in your book you talk about church being, it's like one house, um, a big house with yep, many rooms. Many rooms, yeah. So for someone watching who maybe they have went to church when they were little, or they've never been to church. Yeah. You know, what is it about church? What is it about Jesus, Lord, that you would say they should come and give it a try? Oh my gosh, I love that question. Well, first of all, I'm really glad that you're a, um, an Aussie. Yeah, so Aussie, we're like, Aussie, Aussie. So we're family, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Listen, I, I love church because um, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. So I encountered Christ when I was 15. A friend invited me to her church. I walked in and I felt the tangible presence of God. I made a decision that night and I encountered Christ, I encountered Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and my life has never been the same since. I've never ceased to love it. And so my only experience of church is actually beautiful. So I recognize sometimes when people talk about church, um, you need to define that because sometimes that means a whole bunch of things for some people. For some people it means an institution, a religion, it represents brokenness, abuse sometimes, sadly, all sorts of things. My experience is only lovely. And I've experienced two churches in my lifetime um, and they were beautiful. I only left one because I met and fell in love with my husband and then we moved to Australia. And I think the church is, you know, it's the church is people. It's not a building, it's not an institution. Like I just said, it's actually people. And what is not to love about that? And what is not to um, sow your life to that end. And so I'm really blessed because our church is not perfect by any means. I say that all the time. Hillsong is not perfect. It's full of people that's not perfect. But I think it's healthy. And we labor to create a really healthy environment where people can flourish. And I think in that environment, it becomes this big, beautiful family. So for me, the analogy of family is actually a revelation of the church. And I see the church in that context. And I often, I lead and we pastor and lead with that in mind. So like a healthy family, it's full of young people, it's full of, of adventure, it's full of mess sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, but you know, there's a devotion to your family and a devotion to your children. And so our church is like that. And you know, these days, I mean, our church is a local church in, all, in every sense, we love the local church, but our church just happens to be a local church with a rather large global footprint these days. And so the revelation of one house, many rooms describes our church perfectly because it is one house, it's one family, it's one church, yet it finds expression in many rooms, locations, campuses all around the world these days. Yeah, and so you've written this book, Stay the Path. Mm -hmm. And before we get into it, I wanna talk about Someone watching who may be thinking, what is the path? Like, I don't yeah, even right. have, are we supposed to have a path? So yeah. what would you tell them about yeah. getting on the path? Yeah, well again, it's a, like, it's actually a prevailing revelation in my heart, you know, because it comes with that moment of decision where you realize he actually is a real, God is real, yeah. and that we're on a pathway home to heaven. And so, you know, everyone is on that journey. We're all on a journey. Life is very temporal. Um, there is an eternity, there is a destination. And there's a pathway to that. And, you know, the Bible talks about the narrow path and the wide path. And Christ Jesus came because the world was a mess. He came to, um, you know, he it was the ultimate intervention to rescue humanity and put us back on the right path and put us back on the right way. And so I think, you know, the essence of that book, it's full of my experience and wisdom that I've we've learned along the way. But the, the bottom line revelation is that there's a pathway. And if you don't get a revelation of that, then why would you stay the path? And why would you endure? And why would you overcome when you need to overcome? And why would you not quit? You know, because when you realize that you're 
also that life is not in, just only about you. Mm -hmm. It's about those that you do life with. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, as a mum, the way I walk, the way I live, the way I um, pilgrim through life affects my children. Yeah. It affects the congregation, the people that we live and lead in you know, our church. And so having that revelation gives you, I think, an inner strength and an inner capacity and um, a conviction to keep going. And God has so much more. Yeah, He has so much more. Yeah. And my, my final question, I want to talk about women. Yeah. I know that's a huge part of your heart. It is. Um, you have the color conference that's been going on for 21 20 years. years yeah. 21 years. Um, and so a woman watching now may think, wow, it's great for you. You know, you're on stage, you're seen, you have this great ministry. And they may feel, you know, not seen, you know, behind the scenes and not important. What would you tell that woman that's watching now that's like, what? Yeah. Why am I important? Well, I think comparisons are deadly, you know, and I think, you know, the greater message is that we're all everyday women. At the end of the day, we, you and I are sitting here with makeup and, and lights on us, but we're everyday people mm -hmm. and everyone's an everyday person and everyone has something to contribute. And everyone has a world to influence. And I think sometimes you just got to take a different perspective. Just look around you and think, okay, what, what do I have in my hand and where shall I be faithful? And that's really what all that God requ requires of us. And I think comparison is just dangerous. So don't compare. Just be faithful with who you are, with what's in your hand. And you know, if we all did that, if we all did that, actually we would end up making this world a whole better place. We can change the world. <laughs> we could change the world, actually. Totally.